Right now I am close to Elberton, Georgia, a little north of it in fact, which is pretty close to the South Carolina border. And I'm at what are called the Georgia Guidestones. Now I've been, I guess, flaneuring through small town America uh, for the past week or so just to do it. And I've ended up here. So if you've never heard about these things, they're a mysterious monument. I'll go into the specifics. It's relatively recently put up around 1980 by some mysterious person from some mysterious organization. There's a bunch of conspiracy theories about it, so it's worth talking about, and I might as well show you around. So, let's go ahead and do that. So, superficially, the Georgia Guidestones, they're around 20 feet tall. They're pretty big up there. They have engravings on each side in a different language. We'll go to the English side over here. Now, Elberton, Georgia, where this is built, is known for its granite. If you go driving around, we're a little away from the, the actual city, but if you go into the uh, closer, you'll see basically a bunch of granite businesses. They make everything from countertops to mausolea, so you can get one if you want. But I think that's one of the reasons that this was, I don't know, decided that uh, it would be bu built here. Anyway, so the inscription is, there are four pillars here with an inscription on each side, each in a different language. And they all say the same thing. Here's the English side. I don't know if you can make out all of that. I think you can, but uh, you can read it on Wikipedia if you can't. Uh, the idea behind it, so the LARP behind this monument, first off, was that if the whole world collapses, if society collapses, this granite monument might still be around, just because it's in a good location, uh, good material, it's not going to erode or something like that. So it's supposed to give advice in different languages as to how to organize society, which, so that's the LARP. Now, of course, most of them are just like, you know, balance personal rights with social duties. I mean, it's just a bunch of platitude, you know, platitudes or, you know, avoid petty laws and useless official. I wish I wish we could actually do one of these things. But uh, now the more controversial one is at the very top. I don't think you can read it with the lighting. Uh, yeah. OK, so maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. So that's the controversial part because there are, you know, a whole bunch of conspiracy theory people who are like, dude, it's a, this monument's put up by like NWO, like Illuminati people. I, th I think even uh, the Georgia Guidestones have made it to an Alex Jones, uh, Jones documentary. I think you can check them out on there. But they've made it every once in a while, they'll get defaced with, you know, some kind of, uh, I don't know, people complaining about pedophile vampires or psychic vampires or whatever it is. Now, anyway. Let's go ahead and look at the inscription. So again, here's the English, and here is uh, Russian. Um, I'll go ahead and tell you I have an indirect personal connection to this guides, these guidestones. I'll tell you that in a second. Here's Spanish. There is uh, Swahili. And on the other side, Hebrew, of course. And um, I was going to say Sanskrit. This is Hindi. This is Hindi, yeah. There's a Sanskrit inscription up there. I'll talk about that in a second. And um, actually, the typesetting, very disappointing. If you look at the... Whoever typeset this cannot handle Devanagari on granite. I don't know. It's probably... They probably do it better in India. But <laughs> who's going to notice? <laughs> and uh, here's Arabic. Same thing. And uh, Chinese in traditional characters uh, there. So now up at the top on all four corners, you'll see there's another inscription. There's Egyptian up there. I mentioned um, Sanskrit is on this corner. Sorry, went a little blurry for a second. On the east corner over here is, uh, looks like there's a little bit of, I don't know, water. I, I don't know what that is, some kind of black stuff, but that's ancient Greek up there. And on the last, I think um, their cuneiform I think that's Babylonian. It might be Akkadian or something. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's Babylonian. Actually, it says on the... Um, I think it says on this thing. Yeah, Babylonian cuneiform. So, and oh, as they say here, let these guidestones... Uh, let these be guidestones to an age of reason. It says that on each side. Now, I mentioned I have an indirect personal connection to these. And that is because my professor at uh, University of Georgia, he actually wrote the Sanskrit and the uh, ancient Greek translations up here. So um, uh, I note that because, uh, of course, he doesn't know anything about these guidestones. He was just commissioned to do it. Basically, well, actually, if you go over here to this informational plaque, 
it tells you some of the origins of this. Um, basically, some mysterious guy uh, named R.C. Christian, probably a pseudo name, but uh, he, he came around asking people to basically have this thing built. He said he represented a group of people who wanted it built. And he actually came to the University of Georgia when my professor, who, who was actually just starting out as, uh, I guess, doing historical linguistics or classics or something like that, uh, because he was looking for someone to translate you know, the whole the saying into ancient Greek and to Sanskrit. So uh, my professor did both of those. And, um, you know, I mean, if you, if you can read ancient Greek, uh, one thing he talked about is obviously, if, uh, again, the translation is, let these be guidestones to an age of reason. And he was like, well, you know, there's no real word for guidestones. So, you know, what it literally says, if you can read it, is, you know, let these be, you know, stones. Uh, actually, let me actually read it first. Basically. Uh, yeah, showing the way or something like that. So with a participle, um, or I think there's some blackness over that. Uh, now I can actually make out the Sanskrit, and I don't really know that much Sanskrit, but I remember he mentioned that there's an error in the Sanskrit portion. Uh, I can't really make it out from here, and half of it isn't even visible uh, from here. Um, so anyway, that's the linguistic portion of this monument. Additionally, there are a couple astrological things here. So, actually three of them. One of them is this hole. Bam. Now this points through to, I think, uh, the North Star or Polar North or whatever it is. Uh, so it is positioned perfectly for that. And then over here, this I think um, shows you the sunrise at the equinox, or the solstice, excuse me. Actually, let me double check that. I think it says over here. Uh, da, da, da. I thought it said over here. Oh, yeah. Astrological features. So, channel through the stone indicates celestial pole. That's what I said. Horizontal slot indicates annual uh, travel of the sun. Okay, maybe it's not so, whatever that is. And sunbeam through the capstone marks noontime throughout the year. So, we'll go ahead and look at that. And that one up here, that is that thing up there. So, obviously, today we actually are getting close to noon, but it's way too cloudy to see it. You probably can't even... Yeah, you may be able to see some light through that thing, but it's, uh, you know, obviously it's supposed to be perfectly at noon for it to, you know, shine through perfectly. And it's all cloudy, so it's not really going to work out. So anyway, um, so this is a place you can come by. Again, it's in Elberton, Georgia. Very mysterious. Uh, there is additionally, over here it says at least, that there is a time capsule. You may have noticed when I was looking at this before. Place six feet below this spot uh, on blank to be opened on blank. So the dates were never filled in. Maybe that means the time capsule was never put there. Maybe that means they're just not going to tell you what happened. I'm not quite sure. So there may or may not be a time capsule under here. I don't know. It actually looks like at least some animal was trying to dig in here. So maybe this granite isn't quite as good as uh, anticipated. Let's see if there's, yeah, it's just something's been digging in there. Might have just been a little kid. This is actually the first time I've... Well, okay, I've only been here twice. This is the first time I've been here and there's no one else here. I thought about recording last time I was here, but, you know, there are some boomers and their kids walking around. But again, it's, um, I don't know, sort of a mysterious monument there. Now, of course, there are a lot of other uh, real monuments in the area uh, commemorating mere, real events and kind of stuff like that, but this is one that I think uh, vexes people. Just because there's sort of a, you know, conspiracy. I think people sometimes think, uh, uh, actually, you know, yeah, I forgot about this. There's some kind of signature or symbol in there. Uh, I don't know if that's on every side. I don't think it is. There are a couple, like, little Easter eggs here and there. Actually, yeah, this is on every side. Or at least those two. Maybe I can double check. So, um, that could just be from the company that made the granite. I'm not quite sure. Uh, oh, you know what? I think... I feel like there was something else weird over here that I found last time. Uh, there's some, like, notch... Yeah, there's... Oh, yeah, okay, so... See, in the corners of all these, they're just normal granite corners, right? But over there, I don't know if you can make that out, there's an empty space. Like, a cube has been taken out of it. So, um, I think... I think if you read up on it, I think there used to be a piece there, and it was physically removed or something like that. I don't think it was made out of granite, it was made out of something else. Um, so no one really knows what that's about. Um, so, anyway. 
yeah so that's that pretty much these again are the Georgia Guidestones. Uh, you can have your own conspiracy theories about them. You can pretty much drive up to them. They're just on this country road. Visit the local town of Elberton nearby. But I was just sort of driving in. Figured I might as well uh, give it a visit. So anyway, hope this piqued your interest. And I will see you boomers next time.